what's going on y'all okay you know i feel like my voice is back just a little bit you know so if it still sounds a little low because it feel like it's a little low you know it's low like i'm trying to take somebody draws off or some shit like that but you know deal with me because you know if you seen my other review from last night y'all understand what happened uh so we back for a review for empire scandal and how to get away with murder okay so empire season two episode six a high hope for a low girl I had to take some notes on this because this episode, this was actually a good episode and it kind of irked me all in the same time. The whole shit with, you want to know what mainly irked us? The whole shit with Hakeem, okay? Because that's how it left off last week, well, two weeks ago. It left off with Hakeem getting snatched in the crit, uh, snatched by some um thugs and all this shit and talk about some, you either get down or lay down. I said... Just ain't state property. We was all sitting here like, girl, what? All right. So, you know, the episode starts. We trying to see what's going to happen to Hakeem. That was the main question. Hashtag, where's Hakeem? Hashtag, what happened to Hakeem? And it just irked me the way that they did this because they made it seem so simple. Like, it wasn't... I mean, I'm glad they kind of didn't really draw it out. They got it out the way. You know, they snatched his ass up, got the demand for the ransom and all that shit. But it was just too fucking simple. But let me get back to the beginning. So we start this episode off with Becky's ass. Becky's bit. Look, let me tell you something. Big bitches, big bitches, big girls, big niggas, all that. We need love too, okay? So don't even trip. Even though I really didn't want to see all that shit. <laughs> but it was... It, you know, for some reason, maybe from a big bitch to another, even though I wouldn't be in that position, hell no, okay? Um, she was getting it in with Jay Popper, a rapper off of Good Life. And I said, ooh, okay. He was like, damn, girl, you know, that shit was good. You know, you had me all up in it and shit. I want some more. I was like, mm, mm, I hope it's fresh. Because, you know, sometimes big people, you know, you got a little stench to them if they don't clean everything right. I wouldn't know about that because, you know, I'm always fresh. But I was just like, okay, you know, do what you do. And let's be honest, because Gabby said if they had her little man, a little man just like that, and that motherfucker was smaller than him, and they was together for a while. I don't even know if they still together, but, you know, don't say big bitches can't get, no, um, can't get nobody. Size don't even matter sometimes, okay? People got preferences. But I really didn't want to see that. And every time Gabby be laying back on her back, like, even last week when she was laying back on her back, um, and, um, they had woke her ass up when she was over at Jamal's house. I was like, it just scares me because I'm like, girl, you're gonna suffocate yourself. If I lay back on my back, I gotta arch my pillows and shit. I ain't trying to die. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, because, you know, you got big titties and all that shit. They go like this. But, no, I was just confused, and I was happy at the same time. Like, yes, Becky found again her son. She ain't just being a little lackey. They finna give Becky a little storyline. I see what they trying to do. And so... He was doing all of that shit, and, you know, she was like, I got to get to work. I can't be standing up here. And then he was like, you know what? I need you here and all this stuff. And she wrapped that leg around him. I said, look at that big old ham hog turkey leg. Go ahead, bitch. He said, oh, if you keep on doing that shit, you're going to keep on getting this. I said, well, get the D, bitch. All right? I ain't even finna hate on her, you know. Um, Cookie, she rehearsing with the girls, right? They supposed to be doing this performance. Hakeem's supposed to be there because Hakeem is on the track and he's not there. She's on the phone. She's trying to find out where he at. She like, bitch, where your ass at? Bring your ass here. We got Portia over here trying to do the steps. Portia is fucking hilarious. If they ever get rid of Portia, I'm going to be mad as shit because her little scenes just make it for me for some reason. She's just so fucking hilarious. And um, she gets sent this video <clears throat> of Hakeem. Um, you know, with tape on his mouth all sweaty and shit. And she think, oh, uh, this just Lucius playing because Lucius played too fucking much. And so we see Hakeem with the hick, um, with the kidnappers and whatever. And they was, they shaded the fuck out of him. They said, man, we should have snatched the other brother, the more talented, famous one. This motherfucker probably ain't going to go but for 50 cents on a dollar. I said, well, shit, ain't that some bullshit? <laughs> So Cookie goes, well, Jamal was in the studio. He was doing a song. Lucia's playing on the piano. He really wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it at first either. And, you know, 
He was like, I can't because the Staples Center ain't called me back to see if I can perform now. And, you know, Michael cheated on me. And me seeing him getting his dick sucked. And Lucius was like, nigga, I ain't need to hear all that. He was like, you know, take all that pain that you're feeling right now and put it in the song. And I said, you know what? Some of the best songs, them hurt ass songs, you, they be going through Mary fucking J. Blast. Some of her best shit was when she was drugged out and in pain with over Jodeci, what his name, KC, JoJo, which one, KC, and all that shit. Bitch, come on now. Y'all know some pain make the good music, really. Look at fucking Adele. That bitch, we ain't even gonna get into it, because that bitch just, that bitch right now. But, um, hello? <laughs> no. Um, hello from the other side. I gotta go to her concert, for real. Listen. Listen, okay. Anyway, moving on. And Cookie comes up in there and was like, so you doing this shit and show him the video? And he was like, girl, that ain't me. I ain't had nothing to do with that. You know what it is that they doing? They trying to flex you out. They trying to extort you and all this stuff. So, um, let me get back to where I was. Hakeem, well, he was getting all, you know, bucking his junk. He, he, he get, they had the bag over his head and he somehow got the bag off and they was in this little bandit warehouse or whatever. And he was like, you know, he see the dudes putting their shirts on and on their backs, it was like this face of like a, um, a cow, no, uh, cows or some shit like that. You know, and he was like, oh, so y'all some cowboys and some shit? I'm Hakeem fucking lying. And I'm, Bam, they knocked his ass out like, little nigga, we don't give a fuck, okay? Shut the fuck up. It don't even work. Then keep that in mind, that tattoo. And I was like, all right, so Lucius and Cookie, you know, they meet on a bridge, and basically this is the drop-off point for um, Lil Hakeem. They asked for $40,000. It's a snatch and grab, and Cookie's, you know, she's stressed out because back in the day, they used to kill people when they do shit like this, and, you know, um... Lucius was like, it ain't even that type of party, times change and all this shit. So, this van, you know, he get a call from the kidnapper. The van, they was like, I got the money and all that shit. And I said $40,000. That's it, but okay. And the van pulls up. The guy, he was like, I don't know who your son is. All I know, whoever the fuck it was in the backseat of this car told me to let him out at somewhere else. And all they did was give me a phone and some directions, okay? I don't know, you know? Come to fucking find out this little nigga. See, this is what I don't like. I said, kidnappers. Now, on the shit that I be watching, I ain't never been kidnapped or never had nobody be kidnapped and offer, you know, demand a ransom. And then the person that's supposed to drop them off, let the person who was kidnapped get off wherever the fuck it was that they wanted to get off instead of the drop point. And they just let him out. And he walking down the neighborhood with a busted eye. People looking at him like he crazy and shit. I would have been looking at him stupid too. Like, nigga, what the fuck? You couldn't clean that shit up? You know, you just got it dripping. Anika on the same opposite side coming this way, running. You know, she was doing out, doing her little daily jog or whatever. She talking to her mama. She going through it. She freaking out because she ain't got nobody. Don't nobody want me. I don't have nothing. Grab that shelf out. But, um, she see Hakeem. And Hakeem got her all up on her doorstep and everything, kissing all on her. And I was just confused. I said, so you got fucked up. And you don't go to your mommy and your daddy. I mean, I can understand not your daddy. But you don't go back to the people to see, tell them that you're okay. You go to, 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 to Nika and get you some pussy. Like, I'm just so confused. What about little Laura? Okay. What about little Gloria Estefan? Like, what the fuck was that? I was just confused about that whole part. You know, so back at Empire, we got Andre trying to rebrand Gutter Life Records, right? And he wanted to put all these artists through the ringer, ask them questions, see if they're going to make the cut because he's going to trim the fat. And I was like, okay. But he kind of put Becky on the spot, and she was trying to get some little ideas. And he was like, okay, that would have worked if you was working over there for real, for real with Empire. But we over here now. Becky looking at him like, I'm not here for you right about now. You know, so, um, they wind up doing some shit like that. And Andre wind up meeting with some of the artists, right? And asking them these questions and stuff like that. Who was your uh, musical influence and all that stuff? Girl, when he was asking Frida Gass and shit about her brand and all that stuff, that bitch just sat there and popped that gum like, that ain't my problem right about now. I'm just here to rap. <laughs> That's how she was sitting there. Then we see Jay Popper. 
J Papa tells him, he was like, what the J stands for? Job. He was like, Job in the Bible? He was like, yeah, because, you know, I'm a preacher kid. Well, actually, my grandfather was, I'm a, I'm a son of a, my grandfather is a preacher. So that's where the Papa comes from, paying homage to him. And I was like, okay, here comes Andre. You should incorporate some of that up into your music, you know, the word into your music. I said, Lord, it's called Gutter Life Records. I get it. You know, some of these rappers, they want to put God in their stuff and everything. And I said, you know that I ain't finna fly with um, Lucius. And so, later on, Jay Popper doing this performance at Leviticus, I think. And I guess it was like, well, all these artists or whatever, they were showcasing all the artists or whatever. He doing this performance. Jamal and Becky come walking out. He was like, hey, so you fucking with him? Girl, yes. He was like, so how that wine do? That wine is big and it's hitting all the walls. And I said, Becky, no, ma'am. I didn't want to hear that. And then, you know, next thing you know, they vibing out. Andre telling Jamal, I'm not really here for Becky fucking around with J-Pop because an A&R and an artist, that's going to get messy. And uh, Jamal was like, just let her do what she do. Like, it ain't nothing. And next thing you know, Lucius pop up. They all vibing to the music and tell, you know, J-Pop put in there about the Lord this and the Lord that. And Lucius and Becky said, what the hell was that? <laughs> I said, oh, Andre, I see what the hell you trying to do, okay? He trying to say these souls through music, all right? <laughs> but um, at the same time, the same damn showcase, Frida get her ass up there and she performing. And this dude was like, mind you, Frida is, uh, um, Hakeem, Lucia's number one right about now. That's the one that he wants. That's the one that he's focusing all his attention on. And he was like, regardless of what goes down, Frida stays. He was, um, Andre was like, as long as she passed the box, Yeah. And so she performing, and this guy was like, boo, get that weak-ass shit out of here, you ugly bitch, you a corn muffin, and all that shit. The first time, she ignored it. And then she got up in his face and kept on doing her little thing. The second time, she said, fuck this shit, fuck you, and let me kick you with my size nine, okay? Kicked him in the face, and then walked the fuck up out of there. And, you know, once again, Andre was like, she gotta go. Lucia said, she ain't going nowhere. He said, but you put me in charge of the record. She said, no, I didn't put you in charge. I put you in place. Learn the difference. And I said, oh, okay. You know, so Jamal, he at one point early in the episode, he getting all pissed off in the studio because the Staples Center passed him over. And they said that he's too narrow of an artist. And he took that to mean as him being gay. And he's over the fact that Empire Records keep promoting him as a gay artist. And he's like, I'm not a gay artist. I am an artist who just so happens to be gay. My music is not gay. And I understood exactly what he was saying. And Lucius was like, but you a gay artist. He was like, no, nigga. So he up in the booth and he, you know, putting that out. He was like, put all that passion into your music. And so he put it in the music and this dude comes in. And he was clapping and come to find out this guy named Jameson. You know, he, um, if you ever seen, uh, what's the next thing, what's the worst thing that can happen? And he was the detective with the dogs, <laughs> the flamboyant detective, that shit was so funny. And, um, basically, Jamal wants him to, like, manage him or brand him, rebrand him, because he has dealing with the LGBT community, and he used to be in the music industry, and Lucius was not here for him, because Jameson said, when Lucius was getting off of um, his other record label, he almost signed to him, but until he found out he was gay. But Lucius just don't trust dude, okay? He was like, I hope he do what he said he gonna do for you. Um, Hakeem, on the other hand, he going through the motions. I'm thinking that Hakeem, you know, he got a concussion, or a head injury or something, because when they finally get Hakeem back at the house, he didn't want the doctor to look at him. They was like, did he touch you sexually? That's what they was trying to imply. And Hakeem was like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Don't play with me. And the doctor said, you know, he just got the little bruised eye and all that shit and the bruised ego. That's what it was. And... He was just blaming Lucius. He was like, ain't nothing good ever come out of being your son or whatever. This is why they did it to me and all this shit. Fuck y'all. And at the rehearsal for the girls, he was like, everything was like static in and he couldn't hear the stuff right. He couldn't get his words right. He couldn't get the moves right. He just stepping off on people. And, you know, I was just like, girl, you need to go sit down and recoup. Okay? Because this ain't right. Um... Lucia is trying to say that Hakeem needs to come back to Empire. Cookie ain't going to let that shit happen. You know, they getting a little spat. 
And he having again at his place, he trying to do the words to the song. He can't really do it. He having flashbacks. He's acting out. He's pissed off. I'm like, nigga, go talk to somebody. But of course, he ain't going to talk to nobody. He's wallowing in his little grief. And he talking to Cookie Goes and talks to Hakeem. They was on the phone while she was over there talking to Delgado, the little security dude from last week. Keep in mind, we all don't trust him. Something was fishy about him, and we know now, okay? So he was like, why don't you just hire the dudes that fucked up Hakeem and put them on the payroll as security? And Cookie said, bitch, no. I don't trust people like that, and I don't trust ex-cops. Mind you, Delgado is an ex-cop. No, she said she don't trust cops and all that stuff. And she was like, well, you're an exception. And he said, well, me being a cop, I used to see this shit. You know, stuff used to go down, and then when people go to jail, all this drama and stuff would stop. So, you know, put them on the team. And you got Cookie thinking about this shit. And I was like, girl, don't do it. Girl, don't do it. So, Cookie takes um, Hakeem to go meet the people that fucked, her up, fucked him up. And he was just looking around like, girl... Hmm, okay. As soon as they get up in there, he pulled a gun out. Who the little bitch now? I said you. Still you. Cookie got to talk you down and say, I swear to God, if you pull that trigger, I'll put myself in front of that trigger. I will put myself in front of that bullet. I will die before I lose another son. And she took the gun from him and put it back on dude and was like, what it is now? And he was like, you know what? Since y'all doing all this shit, um, we going to double the fee. And she put that gun in his face and said, bitch, if you come near my family or my artist again, you won't even hit a door. And he was like, okay, I get you. And I was just like, what? This man took your kid for $40,000. I just wasn't getting it, but okay. Um, Cookie and Jamal, they talking about, you know, they was worried for Hakeem and all this stuff. And it was cool to see that they now on a better court. When we see next week's episode... We see, you know, Jamal trying to get more advice and get more active again with Cookie. Like, trying to get on her side again. And Lucius ain't going to be having that. Um, Cookie was like, welcome to my streets, bitch. I was just like, alright, y'all doing a lot up in this episode. And, you know, Hakeem, he was having this performance with the girls, right? They finally come to perform. And he was outside. Lucius pulls up in the car. And he was like, listen to this beat. And then he listened to the beat. And it was that boom, boom, bang, bang. And he was like, this is for you. It ain't about you. It ain't, it ain't for you, just for you. It's about you, okay? This stuff, it ain't about blood, bloody eyes and, and, and um bruises and shit like that. It's about life or death and all this shit. He was trying to give it to him. And he just put it out there like it was really, I made this beat for you, okay? So that you could put your pain into this song. And Mr. Hakeem said, bitch, now, he was like, you know, because um, um, Lucia said you can have it with no strings attached. And then Hakeem caught on and said, bitch, with you was always strings attached. Okay, you that motherfucking string that motherfuckers put around their neck and choke. Okay, and I'm not here for it and walk the fuck away. Lucius wasn't here for him turning his back on him and came up in there and said, don't you ever do no shit like that. You need to grow the fuck up and stop wallowing in your grief, trying to get pity and shit. You ain't gonna never be shit. You a weak bitch and all this stuff. Cookie was like, calm the fuck down. Andre and Jamal come up in there and was like, y'all get the fuck out and let us talk to him. They had this little brotherly conversation. We thought everything was cool. He get out on the stage. The girls out there doing their thing. When it comes time for Hakeem to come out, he chokes. Like, he having flashbacks. He looking at um, Lucius just smiling like the devil. And then, you know, little Laura had to come and kiss him and, you know, rub on his face and get him all back into character. And he was like, fuck that. And he went in. And Lucius was over it and left. So they was having this little get-together afterwards in his little penthouse or whatever. And then here come. Laura was sitting there, okay. And little Nick, uh, Anika knock on the door. He was like, she was like, oh my God, I was trying to see where you were and see if you're okay. And Laura noticed her. And then Anika noticed Laura and noticed how she was looking at Hakeem and Anika. And Anika was like, oh, okay. And I said, bitch, you stupid. See, Anika, when I be trying to let you in, you do something stupid like this. You got played by Lucius. You got played by Cookie. And you getting played by Hakeem. You playing bad woman to fucking Hakeem line. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? And he closed that door dead in her face. I said, girl, I don't have time. This shit right here blew me. And this is where we really see that Lucius ain't shit. And he would sell you a dollar and a fucking dream. 
for whatever, okay? He goes find Frida. She was like, look, man, I'm sorry about what I did. He was like, do you think I should keep you on the um label? I mean, if I was you, I probably would. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to keep you on the label. And not only if that, I'm going to pull you in closer. He was like, you know, I got three sons, but you I identify the most with. Get in the car. Let me hear this. Let you hear this beat that I made for you. Girl, I'm looking at the beat. It's called Boom, Boom, Bang, Bang. And we ain't know the title of it at the first time. And I said, motherfucker. You said you made this beat for High King because I had to rewind to go see. And I said, bitch, <laughs> ain't this some shit? <laughs> and so, you know, Frida was like, oh, okay. And now uh, he started freestyling. Frida put out a bomb-ass freestyle. Girl, put your album out. I'll buy that shit. I really would because she can do some shit, okay? Um, and, you know, that was it. They was just rocking. At the end of that, the episode goes off with Cookie going to Delgado like, you know, okay, let's do this. And he was like, what you mean, babe? She was like, you know, I'm in it to win it. So I just want you to make all this shit that's been going on for the past couple of weeks go away. I want you to make me feel good. And I was like, this is not Monster Ball. But, you know, she got it in with him. And I was just like, Cookie, don't do it. And we was all screaming, Cookie, don't do it. And everything came together, and we was all sitting here like, bitch, we told you not to do it. Because when that shirt came off, he had the same fucking tattoo as the kidnappers on his motherfucking back. And then on next week's episode, we finally realized that he's setting her up to get some motherfucking money. I said, bitch, bring Derek Luke's ass back. That nigga went after your money, okay? Why y'all have to ship him away? Bring his ass back, okay? Where the fuck is Jody? Jody wouldn't let this shit happen. That was Empire, y'all. <laughs> so, Scandal, episode 7, season 5. All right, so we getting back into, you know, Olivia trying to fix cases. It took, listen, listen, seven minutes into the episode, Olivia was already getting read to pieces by Jake, okay? She come back to her little office, to her room, to her house or whatever, and Jake is just sitting up in there, drunk as fuck, drinking her wine and shit, and was like, you know, how dare you let this motherfucking prisoner out? How you let your daddy out like that? And as soon as he gets out, he kills my bitch, okay? He kills the only woman that I love for the woman that I used to love. Or I don't even know who did this. And I was like, wait a minute, Jake. Let me figure this out. So he killed the woman that you used to love for the woman that you love or that you loved and that you used to. Girl, he killed your bitch. Okay, that's what it was. And he was over it. He had every right to be so pissed off because, to be honest, given what it is, Jake don't have nothing left, okay? We got Olivia be playing games with him. Olivia done went back to um, the president and all this stuff. And um, the only thing that he got left or had left or whatever was the, the girl. My, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, yeah. Was the girl. You know, Alicia, she didn't pop back up in, her, in his life and just, you know, gave him hope that he could just go ahead and move on from Olivia. And then that hope died, literally. Got killed. OK, and, you know, he was like Rowan thing was trying to make the perfect kids or the sons and that and the stuff that he did. And basically his best creation was you because he's you, you're just like him. OK, you're heartless, you're cold, you're this, you're that, you're not married, you're doing all this stuff. And I was like, damn, when you come to think about it, Jake was right. And I was like, OK, so, um. After that, you know, before that, we get faced up at the podium giving a speech about how Congress, you know, did the right thing and finding him not guilty for the impeachment and doing this. I said, nigga, you lying your ass off. Just lying, lying, lying. And he was in his office with his uh, his whole staff and all that stuff. And they, uh, Congress, boo, and they having a little party and all that and, you know, trying to celebrate it. At one point, um... David had came in there and told them that um, Ron was gone, okay? Nobody knows how he left. Abby trying to tell um, um, uh, uh, Olivia, girl, don't lie to me about stuff. She was like, don't make me lie to you about stuff, so I ain't even going to say nothing. I said, Olivia, Abby, you should just read between the lines on certain things, and she already know when Olivia just, you know, she knows it. And when David came up in there, she was like, oh, my God. 
whatever it is that you need to say about my father, you can say about it. What's going on? He escaped. He escaped. And he's just looking, she hugging fits and stuff. And I'm sitting here like, she acting like she didn't know. And I said, this is what you two have in common. Y'all both put on shows, stunts and shows, and love to act for the public. Okay? Fitz acted his ass off at that little press conference like he didn't do nothing wrong. Olivia acted her ass off like she didn't know or didn't have any dealings with the fact that um her daddy was out of jail. You know, and how he got out. And I was like, mm, okay. So... Basically, let me see what this episode was all about. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get all that out the way. Um, before, yeah, because I just want to put it all because there that was a case and it was like literally ripped from the headlines. And I love it when, when Shonda does this, it just reminds me of like Law and Order when they rip stuff that was big news from the hairline, uh, uh, from the air, hairline, from the news, the headlines, and stuff like that. And um, continuing on this role with Rowan, basically, Fitz put um, Jake in charge to find him. Find this motherfucker, see where he's at. He comes into the office and he was like, you know, we don't have no clue where he's at, but um, we got to figure out what it is we're going to do. So at this point in time, Olivia is there and she was like trying to say, don't hurt him. That's basically what she was trying to say, because at one point, Fitz said, you need to leave the office and let us talk. And she was like, no, whatever it is that you want to say about my daddy, you can say it right in front of my face. And I said, oh, so now you fake care about your daddy when this motherfucker let you go last year, okay? And was like, you can have him. The wolves are yours, okay? Left you to the wolves and stuff. Now you care? Mind you, you was trying to get him out the picture too. But basically, Jake said, when I find him, the thing was, I'm going to put a bullet in his head and kill him. And he said it just like that, like he didn't give a fuck. And I can truly understand why. Like, Jake is, I don't like this. They turn Jake into this heart. He, he he's His heart is going to be cold now. And, you know, Jake was like the saving matter, you know? Because Jake, like Jake told Olivia, you act like you, I don't know if it was Jake or David, one of them told her, you act like you're the white, uh, the white hat. But you out here doing fucked up shit. You letting a murderer go free. And then um, not realizing that when you do stuff for a murderer and someone like Rowan, you, it's not for free. Okay? She acting like she don't know that her dad is capable of doing some stuff and that he's not going to come out and just be in the background and we don't hear nothing from him. This motherfucker is going to come out wreaking havoc and he's already started. Okay, you know, he started once he gave the uh, committee them pictures about what they did, they dirty dealings or whatever. They feeling like um he going to open up Quinn and them, feeling like, and Huck, he going to open up B613 again. And I ain't got time for it. And I'm like, listen to your people. And you know this, Olivia. Get out of this delusional world or, or quit the act. Okay, quit the act. We're not, we're, we're here. We get it. So you can be real with us. Okay, so stop acting. All right. But. Um, child, next week, when Millie got on that phone and said, you know what, I'm going to call Fitz and let him know that you and me had something to do with Rowan being out. I'm going to spill the beans on everything. I said, bitch, you know, this is one more episode before the winter finale. So, whew, child, two more episodes left. And then, um, after that, we get Liz. There was this author named Frank Holler. Is it Holler? Whatever, Frank. All right. He's this feminist guy. Um, he's all about women's rights, and that's what his stuff is about. You know, respecting women, giving women an equal opportunity, and, you know, trying to be like the ultimate fem feminist and all this stuff. Like, he understands women, and, he and you know, feminists love him and all this stuff. And he's this respected author, Nobel Peace Prize winner, and he's getting this Presidential Freedom Act award or something like that. And Abby sees him, acts like, goes into groupie mood, mode, and gets an autographed copy of his book, gives it to Liz. Liz proceeds to tell her, I was like, since when did y'all become good duties like this? Liz uh, proceeds to tell her, like, girl, if you don't get fits to give me a position in the, um, 
the, uh, in the White House, you know, like a high position because I lost my job to that slimy ass Cyrus. If you don't give me another job and a high end job, um, I'm going on Sally Langston and I'm spilling the beans because you know, Sally love some drama. Cause Sally had already booked an interview with her. And then, so Abby tried to, you know, tell him that and Cyrus really wasn't here for it. And, you know, Fitz was like, so fuck what? Let her get out there and say whatever it is that she want to say. And, of course, Olivia had to, you know, smooth things over because Fitz, it's tension between Cyrus and Olivia. They not fucking with each other like that. And But Cyrus had to break it down to her. Girl, Fitz ain't no th the president no more, okay? You're the president because at the end of the episode, he trying to figure out some stuff to do and he don't know what to do. Olivia stepped in and said, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. And I was like, well, Cyrus was right on that one. And um, Liz, she go in there. First of all, she talking to David about the shit. David flirting with the vice president. The vice president liked David. And you can see the little chemistry between them. But then Liz get on Power of the Press or Justice League or whatever the fuck it is that Sally do. And they thinking that she going to spill the beans. Bitch, she got up there and flipped the script and said that, um, girl, the shit that Congress did to Fitz was wrong. He is one of the best presidents up there just doing his job, one of the best human beings in all the world, you know. And I said, where is this coming from? And we was all like, she didn't got him a job. That's what it is. Got her a job as chief of staff, I think, of the vice president or somebody. Cyrus was over it. That's when he read, tried to read the fuck out of um, um, Olivia and everything. I said, y'all just love coming at her head. But, you know, she kind of deserve it most time. And, um, because she's been acting stupid for the past few episodes. She really has. That white dick got her turning tricks and trades. But, um, they get this new case. This college girl or ex-college girl or whatever, she comes in saying that she was raped by Frank the, um, Holler or whatever his name is, the author. The feminist person. It was like, ain't nobody gonna believe what you're saying. And I said, bitch, this is Bill fucking Cosby. The whole thing. Instead of it being a famous, powerful actor that, you know, nobody will listen to because it's him, okay? And he got so much power, so nobody's gonna believe my story. It's an author, all right? And it's like, the students are enamored with him and respect him because of his work. Just like the models... And the so-called actresses did with Bill Cosby, right? And she was like, he drugged me. He raped me. I came over there to talk to him about a paper. And next thing you know, I'm waking up and he on top of me and all this stuff. And he acting like he got the perfect little marriage. The wife is just there and all that stuff on his side. Girl, they was like, ain't nobody going to believe you. They give it to Fitz. Fitz was like, damn, I don't know what to do. Olivia was like, I do. So she go talk to the wife, you know, and them. They acting like, girl, this ain't never happened. And I'm like, the way he was giving off the vibe was, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. And they was like, the only way that we going to get this motherfucker is if we get some other girls or other people that, you know, said that the same thing happened. But prior to that, it almost went to victim blaming a little bit because he said that the girl came over and because she plagiarized the paper. So they're trying to make you think as if she's crying rape because she got kicked out or called out for plagiarizing. And she was like, yeah, I plagiarized the paper. I admit that. But this ain't the, that ain't why I'm saying rape because... He actually raped me. He drugged and raped me. And then they went and found all these women. And I said, Lord Jesus, ripped from the motherfucking headlines. Come on, Shonda. I hope Bill Cosby and his wife ain't sitting at home looking at scandal. Because now they lost the, um, they like, we ain't looking at the shit no more. Because look what the fuck y'all doing. <laughs> but you put it out there. But, um, after that, you know, kind of find out, they found out that Frank was using his wife's medicine oxycodone or whatever the fuck and to drug the women and to rape them and then when they presented the evidence to them the wife knew and she gave this thing like you know when she was in college and she was trying to do this stuff her um father was like you trying to be a man you trying to do this and you trying to do that and there's a lot of women that come in here and i just did this and i was like girl what your excuse is flawed okay and that does no that does not you're a woman yourself so what if that happened to you? You really helping your husband do this shit and you just don't care. Just like Bill Cosby's wife. Okay? And um, I was just like, wow. So they was like, you can't really do nothing. 
ain't nobody gonna really believe this stuff. So how they gonna um get this man? At the end of the episode, he was going uh, um little form or whatever, reading from his book with all these people, and he had the news and everything got there. Girl, he um uh, was sitting on that stage, and next thing you know, all these different women were saying the same thing. And they come out there and they just start talking right in front of the cameras about how he did his shit to them. And I said, that's how you get his ass. And that's how they got him. That's how they got him. Bitch, and this one more scene when David and Liz was up in the office and they was going at it. And she was like, you don't like me, but you do like me. You do want me. I said, Ellen, come get your fish. Okay, what is it about David that is attracting all these women to him? You got little frumpy looking single mom Susan's waiting outside the office while David is up there fucking the shit probably out of power broker um as Liz. Girl, she said, I'm not waiting. And I said, I didn't need to know that. That's something that you'll tell Ellen. You don't tell us that. But that was that. You know, next week's episodes look like it's going to be charged up. I like this week's episode for the simple fact that it got back to the basis of what Scandal was. And that was solving cases. Okay. But other than that, it was an okay episode. How to get away with murder, child. It was kind of hard to follow along, maybe because I really wasn't paying attention, paying attention. It was an okay episode, but it felt like a filler episode just a little bit, but I still enjoyed it. But basically, let's get the case out the way. There was this case about this woman whose husband committed suicide because, and they tried to, the defendant that they're defending, and Elise's defendant is um the woman's ex-husband, who is a stalker, who keep on, you know... Coming after her and just, it's just irritating. Like, he just thinks that they're going to get back together. All her past relationships after him, he keep on talking about, keep on looking up, keep on exposing, hacking into her stuff and, you know, shit like that. So they thinking that dude killed himself. And it irks me because I cannot, if I was going to go into law, I just know that I couldn't be a um, defense attorney because how do you defend somebody that you know is guilty of doing some foul shit? Like, he's a stalker, and you have to defend this man and say that he's not responsible for this man's murder. And you have to twist it so that this person can get off. And he's just sitting there blatantly showing that he's a stalker and don't give a fuck. And that he be messing with this woman. And he don't care. He all up in the finances, realizing that Mark be going to, um you know, church at night. And the wife thinking that he's um going there just to pray and he's a godly man and all that stuff. But in reality, he was going there for AA meeting and all this shit. And then after that, um, Laurel had set up trying to get into the building or whatever, show the picture to the doorman. Because Annalise came in on Frank and Laurel, you know, doing the nasty in the front, in the front uh, of the foyer. And... She got a little bit discombobulated when uh, Annalise was trying to ask her some questions. And Frank has to answer a question. I think um, one of the other guys has to answer the question. And she was like, so what you going to use? Uh, let the men do it for you and all this shit? And I was like, damn, Annalise, you know, let her get up bearings. And so because of this, she just keeps feeling attacked. Laura keeps feeling attacked. And so she steps out, go ahead and get the, um, you know, fake light. She put on her Spanish accent. And she goes and, you know, kiss up to the, um, the doormat of, uh, the ladies, the, the, the prosecutor, attorney's client, plaintiffs. Okay. Why am I? Anybody else seeing that? Okay, whatever. We're just gonna let it go. It's gonna still record. Just kept on, you know, um, sucking us to him, got him to come in as a material witness because they figured out that... It was the prosecutor who was defending the lady that she was sleeping with. And that's who the husband was talking about in his little 911 call when she said that, you know, he made me do this. He, I'm, I'm doing this because of him. And he evoked his Fifth Amendment rights so that he wouldn't um, incriminate, self-incriminate himself. And so that happened and, you know, they won the case and dude, and at least fired the client. Like, girl, you a stalker, you're creepy, you're pathetic, and you're fired. Get the fuck out. Okay, moving on from that. Asher's little case. Bonnie confronted Asher about what happened at Charter Lake and Charter Lake and I think um 
Michaela overheard the lake part, the name of the lake and all this stuff. And was like, what happened there? And then it was like, girl, get out of my business. So they going and talking about it. And he just saying, I didn't participate in the rape, okay? Yeah, my frat brothers was there. It was a party that I threw, but I didn't know what was going on. She was like, so what? But you didn't help. You didn't stop it. You didn't, you know, you didn't do nothing about it. You just had your daddy clean it up. And he was like, no, that's not what happened. But, you know, that's what ended up happening. And he let it get out that, um, you know, Annalise had showed her the tape or um, told him about what happened to Bonnie when she was younger. So apparently that really was her on that tape as a child getting molested by the father. And Bonnie was pissed off. She was all in her feelings about that. She was trying to contact Annalise. Annalise over there playing around with Eve. We'll get to that in a second. Later, the the kids then found um a tape of uh our what is his name Asher back in the day in the frat house or whatever. And this is when he found like Bonnie found out the depths of what he knew about her, you know. And she was over it. And Oliver, he decided to come over and wire up the house and, you know, take his skills to Annalise. Annalise finally meet him. First of all, Connor was not here for it. Annalise was like, you know, thank you because you're the one that's been giving us all the heads up and, you know, the win and all this stuff. So she thanked him and it was nice. And um, he put in his dating profile to find Philip. Philip is the aunt's son for the Haskell case, okay, for the two brothers, the brother and the sister that's accused of killing their billionaire parents. And they found a DNA in the house that is not anybody's DNA. It's an unknown DNA sample. They're trying to put this killer on them, okay, on the boy. And they have to get in the house to see if it's really them. And, you know, Annalise is telling them to back off and leave it alone for right now. Of course, they not going to listen. Oliver come up in there. He's still playing detective. Like, he get his rocks off on this stuff. And he done made a secret profile about on this dating. Just so happened to be a guy for guy thing. You know? And I'm sitting here like, oh, how convenient. He like dudes. He's closeted. And then I start thinking right off the bat. Especially once he put, um, once he put, um, he didn't use his own profile. He used... Connor's profile and then Connor was like why would you do that and he was like I'm not as hot as you he was like cool with this self-pity and shit and Oliver needs to stop because Oliver excuse me is a cutie he looked better than Connor if you ask me and um he was like fuck it I go and I meet him and just say you know I was a little insecure and I use somebody else's picture and all this stuff Connor was like no I do it because at first Connor didn't want nobody to do it he did he was he was adamant like I don't want my boob getting up in this stuff hell no I don't want him to get hurt you know, he already been through enough. I don't need that to happen to him. And they went on ahead with it. And I was like, y'all are stupid. Y'all are so stupid. And then, and I say this because remember, we found out last week that they was hacking into the boy's computer. The boy had to hack, the boy has hacked into their computer watching them. So he knows everything that they're doing. So he put that fake profile up just to fuck with them and to meet them. So Connor goes meet the boy and they see him go in. But then Laurel comes out trying to call um, Annalise, trying to get them out, tell them to stop this shit. And they pull it because Annalise, you know, she get the phone call, the voicemail and um, tell them to get the fuck up out of there before they get hurt. And Frank comes in there and get Connor. Girl, we got um, Oliver little ass, little innocent Oliver. He just walking in. Singing some bad Felicia song or whatever. Trying to put the milk up in the refrigerator, girl. He just went and got some groceries, okay? And little uh, Philip then walked in on his ass. And I said, oh, don't kill him. I hope they don't kill him. Because that's how the episode ended with, you know, basically with Oliver. And um, we're going to find out in two more episodes in the winter finale exactly who killed, uh, not killed, but shot Annalise and why. But... We got Nate going on trial because his wife died and they're trying to see did he give her some pills or whatever. Once again, this is Sinclair sticking her nose in the stuff. So all of a sudden, Eve is back and she's going to defend him. And, you know, they get the nurse to go on trial. And um, she's on the stand and she's, you know, spewing her stuff. 
And I'm like, the nurse did it. Because the way that she was acting towards Nate, like, I finished her little clothes. I finished her knitting and stuff. I'm thinking maybe she got a little thing for Nate. So she did it. And Nate was like, no, nah, I ain't do it. But when it came time for Eve to cross-examine the nurse, she didn't do nothing. She said she rest her case. And they found him not guilty or found him, you know, something in less than 15 minutes or whatever the fuck. So they went on ahead to trial to go ahead and test the blood. And Annalise was like, why would you do this? It was like, well, he's obviously had something if he wouldn't want to automatically just say, go ahead and do it. Because if he didn't have nothing to hide, he wouldn't have no problem with them testing the blood and all this stuff. But later it comes out that, you know, he didn't do anything. He got off. Um, her and Eve is in the um, hotel room. They talking, memor uh, you know, reminiscing on stuff trying to see if E hooking up with somebody. And it was like, why don't we just run away to an island? You know, I got Sam's money and all this stuff. We can go to Paris and all this shit. I said, Annalise, chill out. But when they was at Nate's hearing, Wes was there. And Eve was like, you know, you can come chill up here. Why you sit back here? She was, he was like, nah, I just got to take notes and do some um work and all this stuff. So that kept in mind what was going on. And that's how... um. And at least found out what was going on with the case because Wes called talking about something. She basically threw the case. And she was like, what is your attraction? What is your feeling for this dude? Why? What? What is it? And then Annalise said, it's him. Either Annalise said it or he said it. Either way, the way she prompted the question or prompted that a lot of people was thinking that, oh, that's him. Meaning that that's her son. Now, from what I remember, she was bearing. We don't know how long she was bearing because that's what I keep on saying. So, I'm going to stick to that. And until they go ahead and say that, you know, I just know when she was with Sam, we don't know how many years that she was with Sam. She couldn't give him a child. But I didn't take that to mean that that could be her son. Or I, I can see them being kin, but I don't know if it's going to be that far as the son. I took that to mean as um, he's the one that I'm protecting because he's the one that killed my husband. That's what I took it as, you know. So, I know some people on Twitter, everybody went straight to the, oh, it's him because he's the son and all that stuff. I don't believe all that, but, you know, maybe I'd be proven wrong. I just, you know, I need some hard facts. But we all need to understand this um thing because, you know, and I say that because, and at least if you know that's your son, this is what I don't get. In the first season, yeah, he got through a lot of stuff. But remember when she was in that bathroom feeling all up on him in a sexual way in another part of an episode, she damn near kissed him or almost kissed him or whatever. You don't do that in sexual stuff with people that you know as your kids and he don't know. Like her, her connection is just so weird with him for him to be quote unquote her son. Like I don't get that. No, I, I mean Shonda crazy, but I don't think she'll go that far. Annalise nasty, but I don't think she'll go that far. Um, so... At the very end of the episode, at the beginning of the episode, we see all of this stuff took place four days later before they go into the mansion and Annalise gets shot. And we see that it was Caleb and, um, and, um, Michaela, not Caleb, Connor and Michaela doing some stuff. And Wes and, um, Laurel was there trying to stop them. Wes had the gun that Levi left in his apartment. And at the end... You know, um, we see Wes talking about something, we got to go stop them. And he calling out to Michaela, um, kind of like, y'all need to stop. Next thing you know, we see the body drop from up above. And it's the DA, Sinclair. Bitch, who up there? Bonnie. I said, Bonnie, God damn, you just killing everybody these days. Mind you, the way that they set it up, Everybody has a reason to be pissed off at Annalise and want her dead or shot or injured, okay? Um, Frank, he just probably tired of fucking cleaning up her mess, okay? Bonnie, Bonnie cussed her ass out like, bitch, you told Asher about what went on. He was like, you know what? I hate you. I wish it was you that died instead of Sam. And I just said, oh, she basically damn near spit in her face. And she was like, bitch, if I don't love you and I don't care for you, you would be hanging and all this stuff and all this stuff. I said, Annalise, just let her vent because she got every right to feel away a little bit. And they was all close. I'm like, damn, is they finna kiss? <laughs> Did they fuck? You know, I was just confused. But you could just tell, you know, I don't, their relationship is kind of weird, too. But um, 
yeah, so we got Bonnie being pissed off at that. So, of course, we could see that happening. Eve just tired of um, by, uh, 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 Annalise playing games because she did fuck her, okay? And next thing you know, I think on next week's episode, or was it this week's episode, Nate, Nate and um, Eve was in the car just com commemorating on the shit that Annalise did to him. And I was like, damn, so you got Nate and Eve could have did the shit, you know, kind of damn show mad because look, Oliver is gone. We don't know where he at. Um, Michaela, girl, everybody got a reason to kill this girl. <laughs> it is so sad when you just can't be like, that bitch did it. I know for sure. It's too many suspects. But that was how to get away with murder. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments and we shall discuss. I mean, do y'all really, really think that that could be her son? Given that, you know, what I said, like, I, that's that's where I'm coming from. Like, it just, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Something else is going on. I don't know. But what do y'all think going to happen? Who do y'all really think killed, not killed, but shot at least? Peace.